like to welcome to the program Certified Financial Planner Practitioner, Stoy Hall. Stoy joins us from Majors and Mondragon in Des Moines, Iowa, where he is a Senior Wealth Advisor. Welcome, Stoy. Thanks for having me. Okay, let's talk financial illiteracy. We have a real challenge in the United States of people, there being this huge gap of people that don't understand finances and how it impacts them, and then of course it makes it very difficult for them to plan. I know this is a very important subject for you, kind of a personal mission. So if you could help our viewers understand what we're talking about, and what, what do we do about it? Yeah, so financial illiteracy um, is an epidemic. Um, and it's been in because, think about it, in schools. We have sciences, math, all of those things um, that I don't use a lot of now as an adult, right? I did it in school to pass, but the thing I always deal with as an adult is money, right? Yeah. Um, and inherently, we've never talked about it. It's usually been up to the families to talk about it, and decades and decades and decades go by. And now we're to the point where people are getting loans and going in debt, and they have no idea what's going yeah. on, um, which has then triggered the psychology behind it. Now they have a bad money mindset, and now we're in this big hole. Yeah. Um, and so now what we have to do is we have to talk about it. We have to be doing shows. We have to be doing articles, and we have to get in front of people to change that mindset. And that's what planners are doing now. Sure. Is it's about advice. It's not about investments much anymore. It's about advice. That advice is helping change their money mindset. The, the biggest thing I always tell people this is if I could have a conversation with any president at any time <laughs> would be put financial literacy from pre-K through college. If you do so, you will start to see a shift sure. in our economy and our society. And now we won't have a huge growing uh, demographic of lower income. You'll have that middle class, which is supposed to be strong, which we all know that's how societies um, expand and continue to prosper. Absolutely. Well, so finances, as you and I both know, and I think a lot of people know this, it's the river that runs through everything. So, but your assessment is fair, and I think it's uh, appropriately candid, and that is that they don't teach it at school, or very little. Okay, there are some initiatives. Yeah. Um, it's almost a taboo subject with families. They're awkward. They're not sure how to explain it. There's this balancing act of talking about the personal finances of the family in terms of educating the, the, the child, and then you send the kids out, and then they're faced every day with very sophisticated, well-tailored, uh, very effective marketing programs to get them to spend money, make choices. And so it, it's really um, a huge need. And again, I thank you and other people we've had on this program to champion this subject. And of course, as certified financial planner practitioners, a lot of what we do is talk about uh, educating the person. And that's why the focus is on education and advice. And investments are important, but it kind of comes underneath financial planning, right? Right, right. It's got to be a piece of it. It has to be a piece of it. And you hit it on the head. The thing is, people love talking about themselves with everything else but money. I'll talk about the last time I broke my leg. Um, <laughs> I'm going through this lawsuit. Like I'll talk about all of this stuff. But when you say, hey, how much money do you make? I clam up and, well, I'm sorry. I've, I've got to go. I got a phone call. Right, right. right. Um, that's what we got to break. What's wrong with talking about how much you make? What's wrong with talking about money? There isn't anything wrong with that. But we have this whole thing about being better than the Joneses, and yeah. we have to dress better and look better and do all those things, and no one wants to talk about how much money they make. And that's important because that helps you with the money mindset. It also helps you understand, hey, everyone's in the same boat I am. It doesn't matter how many zeros there are. Right, and it's not just financial planners who are tuned into this. It's, uh, there are all kinds of government statistics out there. There's a lot of people that are saying, hey, look, we got to do something. So uh, I don't know how we measure it. I don't know how we quantify it, but there's definitely things that need to be done. There's definitely things that need to be done. And yeah, you're right. How do we measure it? How do we quantify it? I don't think we, we will ever know, per se, but what we do need to is make sure we're all having that conversation as much as possible. All right, well, let's dig a little deeper. It doesn't cr cut across society evenly, right? There are going to be pockets or, or um, parts of our society that are going to be more tuned in, some that are not. You mentioned, of course, the strength of the middle class, which everybody watching the program knows that the middle class, of course, is the middle of the bell curve and knows that that's where the greatest population is. And so and a lot of things are talked about with regard to average income, average accumulation, where people are. Everything's about averages, right? It kind of groups around that middle group. So um, how do we address the fact that there are these shortcomings? I guess first, where we see it, the prevalence of the illiteracy, and then how do we reach that part of our, our society? Yeah, uh, the biggest is the lower income 
inner cities, minorities. That's, that's the biggest problem. Um, and I don't know why, but I'm sure it has something to do with history. Sure. But it, it comes down to them. They, they need to be educated. We need to go in there as planners, right? Um, we're doing an initiative in Des Moines based on that, and the governor wants to be part of that too, is you got to get into these inner cities, and you've got to start to educate there. Well, the thing is there, they have two options. Either I'm going to listen to you and I'm going to go make money like normal, or I'm going to go and sell drugs or do something like that mm. that gives me money now because it's always about money now, not about, hey, I can build something over the course sure. of 20 or 30 years. Um, so that's where we're seeing the, the weakest spots in our economy is usually the inner city, usually um, the government assisted, right, because they're relying so much. They're the ones that think it's too expensive to work with someone mm. like me, right? Well, there's a lot of programs that we can help with regardless of that, right? Whether it's pro bono work, yeah. Whether it's maybe I just charge you 20 bucks a month because we just need to start with the basics of basics. Make more money than you're spending. Like Little things like that is what is driving that, but it starts with the inner city to grow outward, um, in my opinion. Yeah, and it's not just government. You mentioned uh, the pro bono, you know, the Certified Financial Planner Board of Standards that, you know, is our, yeah. kind of our regulator, right? Yeah. They're the one that, that credentials us and, and monitors and makes sure we are doing our work as a certified financial planner practitioner. They've got a lot of initiatives in the area of pro bono and really educating the consumer about the importance of financial planning because again, it really permeates our society and how people can move forward. And, and you know, you speak to this in terms of the action now, uh, but the consequences can be intergenerational. Sure can, sure can, and that's, and that's where we're at. Right? Um, what are we? Baby boomers, we have what, five generations in the, in the economy right now going at the same time. Uh, the, the problem with that is no one has then passed on the knowledge. Like mm. it hasn't continued on because we're all working. Right. We're all still trying to figure it out. And yeah, there's pockets of families that have helped and, and whatnot. But overall, we don't talk about money between our own, our own kids, our own families. Mm. And that's where you're starting to see the bigger stretch between literacy and yeah. illiteracy is the fact that the parents can't pass it down because they don't know it from their parents and they don't know it from their parents. Uh oh, now we're, now we're where we're at. Yeah. And that, now we have a really big problem that we're trying to fight and dig our, or dig our way out of. And there's not a lot of planners that are out there doing that because planners are aging too. Mm -hmm. And now since we have planners aging, we have families that are involved with money. Now we have less younger people getting into financial planning. And now we're Hands are not tied, but we have a lot of work to do. Well, we do have a lot of work to do, Stoy. Thank you for being with us. We'll, we'll work on it and educate as many as we can. If you would like more information about the topics and our guests featured in this series, please visit our website at planstrongertv.com. Also, if you have a question you would like David to answer, please send it to questions at planstrongertv.com.